What up, Casanova? Let's talk about rejection. Because guys are still getting hung up on that shit. Yes. Those sensitive, delicate souls. To better understand rejection, we first need to talk about the difference between chance and failure. So what is a chance event? It's a statistical coincidence. It's an occurrence with some level of probability that's outside of your control and has nothing to do with your approach, uh, technique, methodology, design, etc. So say you uh, asked for directions, asked three strangers for directions, and all of them completely disacknowledged you as a human being. Now, is it fair to draw the conclusion that either you know, people in this city are unfriendly or that you are just not likable? Well, I would say no. It's not a statistically uh, significant sample size to be able to draw those kind of conclusions. It's quite possible that all three were maybe very stressed or in a rush. And again, it had nothing to do with you. Excuse me. What up, Casanova? Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know that I'm working on an exciting new product that's going to drop in the next couple of months that's going to teach you everything you need to know about approaching. So if you want to be the first to get notified and stay in the loop about any launch specials, then join the VIP list and sign up in the link in the description below. All right, now let's get back into it. A girl in the blue-ish pants. Wait, two seconds. I'm not selling you life insurance, I promise. He just looked absolutely adorable. Thank you. So I had to, with the converse, no, I had to you. stop for two seconds and hit on you. You seem very, what? Failure, on the other hand, in an extreme sense, has everything to do with your approach or methodology. It's highly predictable. It's like putting your hand on a hot stove. You're going to get burnt every single time, right? Or if you decide to hit on five straight dudes, you're going to get rejected every single time. Uh, and it's because they don't want to fuck with you, like literally. Hey, excuse me. Oh, Sean, I'm so sorry. Did I scare you? Sorry? Did I scare you? Failure is what Thomas Edison encountered when he consistently failed to come up with a design for the light bulb that would work. On the other hand, chance is what J.K. Rowling encountered when she was rejected, I think, 10 or 20 times by publishers uh, with her Harry Potter series. So if something is chance-based, you have to be stubbornly persistent because it would be irrational not to be. And if something is failure-based, then you'd have to change up the strategy. Now, if something is a combination of the two, then you have to try your chances but vary up the strategy to the degree that you think is failure. And sometimes it's really a stab in the dark until you do some digging. So if you're applying for jobs and you got rejected um, from 10 different jobs, well, maybe it's because there were better candidates for every one of those jobs and your resume might be quite decent, like you're generally a decent fit. Or maybe it has to do with the fact that your resume was completely garbage, making you a really bad candidate for any of those jobs. Or maybe it's a combination of the two. Now, let's look at how this applies to cold approach pickup. Obviously, both elements are at play, and sometimes it's really hard to see which one is most dominant, especially when you're starting out and you are just so overwhelmed by the many nuances and factors. So let's imagine a scenario where your approach, your method, your core essence as a man is completely solid, right? It's 100% fail-proof, right? Which is, which is, of course, impossible. Um, but let's imagine that's the case. What are some of the scenarios in which your rejection, quote-unquote, has to do with chance? So the girl could be in a rush. She could be stressed. She could be in a very negative headspace because she failed an exam or because her puppy is really sick. Or maybe she just got approached by three dudes in a row before you and they were super aggressive and uncalibrated and obnoxious and she's just like, ah, another guy, 
no way, right? So it's very circumstantial in that sense. But luckily, you're like, what, six feet? That's perfect. See, even if we dance, I can manage to get my arm around you. That's, that's, perfect. That's so special. So when, we go, when we're going to be in Brazil, and we're like slow dancing. Am I being in Brazil with you or with my boyfriend? She has a boyfriend, apparently. My goodness. How is that even possible? It's cool. We're going to Brazil. You, you take the Uber. Let me put you in a cab. What's, yes. your, what's your boyfriend's name? His name's Justin, and he's like coming. So you just, just tell him. Just leave the scene, okay? Fuck. He's fucking coming. Justin. Honestly, it's fucking always, Justin. It's always the Justin. Justin will kill you. I will fight for you. Tell him. Text him. He he will kill you. Hi. <laughs> let's let's go before he gets here. All right, all right, all right. Maybe it uh, is because she has recently, you know, resparked something with her ex. And now they're trying to reconcile something. So she's not really in the headspace to be stopping and talking to you, right? She's very emotional. She's wondering, you know, where is this going to go? Uh, maybe she's in a very deeply committed relationship and she's super in love and she just doesn't want to be bothered. Now, it's not like in the real world that in, these, in all these scenarios, the girls will, you know, never give you the time of day, right? Sometimes you can... Um, you know, pursue a girl who's in a rush, you know, maybe walk with her, um, maybe, you know, be more aggressive in your approach, or, you know, if a girl is deeply <laughs> committed to her relationship, that doesn't mean that she won't stop and talk to you and maybe even flirt with you. And there are all kinds of nuances, but let's just suppose that, you know, if the girls do completely disacknowledge you and you're solid as a man, that there are all these elements that are out of your control that have no bearing on you, right? So that is very chance-based. I'm impotent. Before you go in. <laughs> I just started this qualifier. Okay, hold on, hold on. Real talk, though. Would that, would that be like a disqualifier? Two seconds. Yeah. Why? Bless you. You're saying me, you're telling me that there's nothing else to me, for me to offer? Now, on the other extreme, let's suppose that you have nothing down in terms of your game, right? You know, you're poorly sloppily dressed. You don't know the basic mechanics of how to open. Uh, you're speaking very faintly. Or you are, you know, spitting at girls. Um, you know, your confidence is just so low. You're uh, bumping into them when you're, when you're opening them, right? You know, you're talking about the most obscene things. And imagine that you approach 10 girls and they're all single and they're all in a good mood and they're all generally friendly. But if you have none of that stuff down, then those are going to be, I guess, complete failures because of the wrong approach, wrong methodology, uh, the wrong core masculine essence that you're presenting to these women. Okay, so we, you see these two different extremes. Now, obviously, the two elements are always generally at play. Um, it's never one extreme or the other, and it's impossible to definitively know, you know, which one it was. So you must at least consider the possibility, especially when you're starting out and you're not as confident in your, you know, general ability and the things that are within your control. You must at least consider the fact that there are many things that are chance events. Having said that, you should work on the things that are within your control, and as you improve, as you become more advanced, you're going to get a much better gauge for what factors are and aren't within your control. Oh, are you cozy? Yes. Are you? Is that real mink fur? Wait, hold on, stop. What's your name? Two seconds. Two seconds. Don't run from me. I'm your future ex-lover. I'm, ste I'm stealing her. We're waltzing away. Is this a real mink fur? What if, what, if we're, what if we're meant to be? We both have green eyes. Okay. Is it we really? We can be friends. Can I kidnap her? She's so adorable. Can we? Look, there are two types of people in this world. There are the circumstantial and results-based thinkers, and there are the procedural thinkers. Now, the circumstantial and results-based thinkers are often 
much more concerned with the current circumstances, with future circumstances, you know, and how they might affect this, you know, the situation and the outcome of things, as well as the results themselves. They're always dwelling on the results. They're attaching, you know, their identity so heavily to the results and the circumstances, right? It just constantly weighs them down. Then the other type of thinker, the procedural thinker, is much more concerned with the process. And their line of thinking is always, what is my next step? What is the process that I need to follow in order to get good? They're not so much insecure about where they currently are because they know where they're in theory going. Because they know that if they, process, if they follow this process, right, despite the results, despite the you know, failure and the rejections, that they're going to get to that place where they need to be. They're going to become that better version of themselves, you know, as cliche as that sounds, and that the re results will follow. So if you start adopting a more procedural-based thinker attitude, which you should, then these failures, these rejections, are going to be merely stepping stones. They're going to be your little mini guiding stars towards success. Yo, Vadim, Vadim, we gotta do an outro. What up, Casanovas? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget the notification bell so you can get notified when we put out new videos. Wait, you realize your top's off, right? Also, drop a comment. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, ideas for future videos, and I'll see you next time. Oh,